look at this everything. I'm so excited about this. This is, this camera is so much better than my iPhone 11. Wow, this is the Canon M50, by the way, if you're interested. If you don't know me, my name's Eli, and I am a marine researcher. And the reason I wanted to make this video is because I get questions a lot about what I actually do as a marine researcher right now, recently graduated, and what the heck I'm doing with Fulbright. Um, and why I'll be going to the Philippines for a year next year for my research. So in this video, I'm going to be going over in detail what exactly I'm doing at this current moment as a marine biologist kind of post-COVID and what I'm going to be doing in the Philippines with my Fulbright project. So a quick background on me. I just graduated Florida State with two degrees, biology and environment and society were my majors. And I did an honors thesis while I was there focused on artificial reefs. So that was kind of the, the focus of my research during my undergrad. I haven't done a master's or anything like that, but um, all of that experience gave me a lot of foundation for applying to Fulbright. I'm so sorry, my dogs again. You're always gonna hear the dogs in the background, so. <laughs> um, so anyway, so towards the end of my undergraduate career, I became very focused on starting to create this project abroad in the Philippines as it became more and more of a reality and a feasible option. So, Going back to the beginning of how this all started, in summer of 2017, I went abroad to a small island near Honduras called Utila, and I worked with the Whale Shark and Oceanic Research Center. So I was really, really fortunate to have been able to do this. It's an unpaid internship, which very few people are actually able to do within their lifetime. So I have continuously have to remind myself how fortunate I am to have been able to do that. Not many people are, and it really played a pivotal role in my life to inspire me to do so many things for the ocean with what I learned there. I went through a seven-week program where we spent a lot of time going through lectures about environmental issues, and then also methods to understand what was going on on the reef. So we would conduct surveys, we would see how many fish, what kinds of fish, what kinds of species were living on the reef, and what kinds of diseases and things were going on while we were there. The program was structured to where you are immersed in these issues during the day through lectures, and then you would go on the reef and then you would see those issues in person. So for example, we'd learn about um, trash on our coastlines and then we would go out and have be like ankle deep in trash on these coastlines. It was just so sad and so incredibly motivating to actually step up and do something for the world for our oceans. So anyway, to provide a little context, one of the people I worked with while at the Whale Shark Center um, was the program scientist there who comes into the picture later on with my Fulbright project. But he was a great mentor. He also taught me a lot about surveying the reef there and we stayed in contact over the years. After this really resonating experience, I was just so full of motivation to conduct a project of my own to just do something for the environment, just do something for the ocean. And that led me to research and so I began an honors thesis. I wanted to do something absolutely insane and go back to Utila and basically attempt to 3D model and compare the shipwrecks on the island to natural reefs, which was just never going to get done as an undergrad with minimal experience and only on a year and a half to two year timeline. It just was absolutely insane to accomplish. So my supervisor encouraged me to scale back and I ended up hopping onto one of her projects that was ongoing, much smaller artificial reefs, much more local. So while I was trying to get this thesis going, I was applying to a very large scholarship with our university to fund this. And after spending a lot of months applying to it, I ended up achieving it. And when I got the scholarship, I posted on um, all social medias saying that I got the scholarship. And I also posted about my project a little bit, said a little 
tidbit about what I got funded for and my friend from the Whale Shark Center, that was the program scientist, he reached out to me and told me that he had gone off and started a new nonprofit in the Philippines and did very similar research. So we had a lot kind of in common and he mentioned that it would be a cool idea to collaborate in some way. And I had no idea how that was gonna work as um, someone that had never really collaborated at a university with other professors at the university, much less researchers abroad. I had no idea how to go about that. So long story short, I became aware of Fulbright while I was conducting my thesis. And if you're not aware, Fulbright is a large study abroad program conducted by the United States with other governments to basically strengthen relations with other countries. And so it's a really huge, really competitive program that I didn't really think I had a chance of actually achieving because I'm only an undergrad and I did not have that much experience going into something that huge. But I had some really incredible mentors that really pushed me to go for it and really helped me kind of get my bearings and realize that I was actually really capable of doing this. So to get this process started, I needed to actually have a professor that wanted to work with me in this country, which I did not have. I just had my friend at this nonprofit. So I had to go through a very difficult, men mentally difficult process of actually finding a professor that wanted to work with me. And I had never gone through this experience before because I had never gone through it with grad school. I was an undergrad and it was really hard. I did not know how to construct an email with people from a different country. I couldn't find so many emails of the correct people to reach out to. Lots of websites were outdated. There was a lot of issues I ran into. And then when I did find the um, emails of the correct professors, they would either be retired of some places or they just wouldn't respond. It was so hard. I think I sent 20 to 30 emails to different professors to actually work with. So it was really hard, but um, I eventually found someone. I found someone at the University of the Philippines that after the first email I sent actually wanted to work with me, which was incredible. And so once I finally had a professor, I could finally create a project with him. So my project, I wanted to, I had a very clear idea of what I wanted to do. I wanted to work with artificial reefs because I had experience with that during my undergrad. And I wanted to work with them in the Philippines because there really isn't too much of a difference with the methodology. And I'm very familiar with how I did it for my thesis so I could do it in a different country. So. I kind of had this idea to this professor and he did not like it. He also told me that artificial reefs aren't really that relevant in the area that I would be working in. They're also just a very difficult thing to work with in the country of the Philippines because there's a lot of restrictions. So he kind of just told me it was not a great idea to focus on artificial reefs. So. He is specifically an expert in giant clams. So he put this idea in my head of using my experience in 3D modeling to basically treat a giant clam as an artificial reef in that the things that grow on a giant clam shell are very similar to what would grow on an artificial reef, which was a really interesting connection. But this was kind of my light bulb moment of when I started to really get the ball rolling with my um, project idea. So once I finally had the project idea, I was working for so long on this project. I finally found my professor in May. I had been still working to find a professor months before then. In total, it was 10 months of work to get this project going. I think I had 18 drafts in the end with my um, final proposal and it was a lot of work. <laughs> so getting into what I'll actually be doing while I'll be in the Philippines, for the first month or two, I will be in Dawin. This is more of a rural location where the nonprofit is located. And I will be working with my connection that I had at the Whale Shark Center and their program. And they'll be teaching me all of the species identification, all the methodology associated with 3D modeling while I'll be there. 
and they'll also be um, basically uh, teaching me the ins and outs of community outreach because they're very established in this very small community and they're very familiar with how to interact with uh, the the locals. So that will be absolutely incredible to kind of have a very clear guide and get my project going with someone I'm familiar with and it will be so nice to have someone teach me a lot of the very specific complex um, species identifications and methodology that is going to make it a lot smoother for the rest of my project. So for the rest of my project, I am going all the way up to Manila, which is the capital of the Philippines, and I'm going to be at the University of the Philippines working with my professor, and I'm going to be traveling between Manila and the Marine Lab for the University of the Philippines in Bolinao, which is another rural location. And they're like three hours apart and I'll be kind of going back and forth doing field work. I'll be diving on sites with restocked giant clams and 3D modeling them, seeing what's growing on them, what's growing around them, and basically how these giant clams are influencing the communities around them. I'll basically be trying to answer the question of how much these restocking programs are helping these um, degraded reefs and communities that they're placed on and how we can best improve them by how we arrange them, where we place them, those kinds of questions. So for the rest of my Fulbright, I will be in Manila for the majority of the time analyzing this data and also working with my professor to do some outreach in the city and some of the outer cities around Manila. So that is my Fulbright project in a very large nutshell. I know I didn't make that short, but um, I know I get a lot of questions about what I'm doing, but I wanted to be, I really wanted to break it down because I know a lot of people are curious. <laughs> so anyway, the other big question I'm getting right now is what I'm doing right now in this very specific moment. And it's been really interesting to be a recent graduate and be someone that is identifying as a marine biologist, but not necessarily tied to a university right now. I'm not a grad student, I'm not an undergrad, I am in between, but I do have a really large project that I am still conducting right now. It's really interesting to be this kind of in between, this limbo scientist. I've never heard of anyone doing something like this. So at the moment, I'm really fortunate to be living with my parents at the moment. Honestly, I'm really fortunate to have this opportunity to take a lot of time for myself and honestly focus a lot on this channel and really build it up to a place where I'm really content with what I'm providing. And I'm just really excited about really diving into being a YouTuber at the moment because when I go to the Philippines, I really want to share my story in the best way possible. So I'm taking a lot of time with learning my how to do this whole thing of social media and YouTube and actually doing a lot of freelancing services. If you're not aware, I do freelancing services with personal statements, um, resumes and CVs, and I'll eventually be launching a coaching service to where I'll be helping people that are aspiring researchers or people that really want to take just the next step in marine biology. I'll have a website up soon, which is so exciting. And a really big thing that I've been doing right now is a lot of juggling with my current Fulbright project because I've had to plan and replan a lot of times right now because obviously things are changing very fast. I was supposed to be in the Philippines right now and I will now be there in January, but it could also be moved back to July, it could be moved back to August. So I've had to make things really flexible. I've had to change a lot of my projects. I've also been writing a lot, um, starting a publication, and I've also been collaborating with a lot of other scientists. It's been really interesting. So yeah, that is all of the uh, miscellaneous things that I have going on at the moment and my project in full detail. Um, I might be posting a little bit further of a detailed review on my proposal in particular, actually breaking it down if um, that is of interest to some of you, but um, 
Otherwise, uh, if you are interested in following along on this journey to go to the Philippines next year, I definitely encourage you to follow me on Instagram because that is where I'm going to be posting a lot more of the live updates. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Did you ever stop and think?